So we come now to the last of the chief examiner's comments on the reading section. So this is focusing on question four, which we know to be the comparing language use question. Typically, as I said to you earlier, this is the one that students find most difficult. And it's a shame because this is the one where most marks are lost. But uh, we're going to get a lot of feedback now from the chief examiner and try and bear what he says in mind. Question four was a question which with which most candidates had difficulty. There were 60 marks available for this question compared with eight marks for questions one, two, and three. The reason being that this question tested the candidate's ability to compare two texts by analyzing the effects of the writer's use of language. So if you just think about that for a second, um, here we've got 16 marks going for the, um, 60 marks going for the comparison because we're going to be talking about two texts. So if we did four in each of the other ones to get eight, then really I guess we should be doing yeah at least at least uh, four points for each source here because that's going to give us a total of eight again. Um, and then that would again marry up to how many marks we got because we're explaining each time again. So just try and always think about the amount of marks you're trying to get and what you've written to get those marks. This was the language question. Examiners reported a number of problems. Sometimes candidates made general remarks about genre, purpose, audience and voice, often confused, without producing effective and succinct examples from the Everest text in support and without finding valid comparative aspects from the chosen text. Okay, so that sounds like it's all gone completely wrong. First of all, they didn't know what they were supposed to write. And second of all, they didn't back it up with anything. Where devices were spotted, the comparisons tend to be forced or weak. So that means <coughs> that perhaps they were trying to force, for example, like an alliteration when there wasn't one, um, uh, you know, a partial alliteration or, or there was a weak example of a of a, perhaps, you know, humor, etc. General comments, for example, about being the first person, being an article happening in the present tense or they both use rhetorical questions might have developed into a valid response but often did not. So you can presume that all of these are fair enough points to mention but they weren't developed enough in the cases that the examiner is talking about. In the best responses and those sought by the examiners, candidates selected interesting, vivid, colorful or exciting phrases from the Everest text and unwrapped their meaning and effect. So that is a very clear indicator to us about what we're trying to do. We're trying to pick out the best sounding or the most vibrant passages, sorry, passages is too long, the most vibrant phrases, and we're trying to unwrap them for their meaning and the effect that they have on the reader. Then they found similar or very different examples from the chosen text explaining that the difference in language use resided perhaps in purpose and or audience. So that's really telling because it means that we don't have to find the direct opposite of what we're looking for. We can find two opposite things, but then compare the way that they actually approach their audiences um, if, if there's a common link there. So that's um, that's that's really interesting because we, we will analyze the language of something and then the, the from one source and then something else from another source. And then the link where we actually make the comparative reference can be in the uh, the, the thing that they both point out or the drama that they're both trying to achieve, etc, etc, etc. So that's, that's, that's interesting. It's, it's well worth knowing. Uh, question four is designated the language question on this tier for the exam. This is a similar question currently in all the legacy exam papers. Candidates would benefit from specific and sustained coaching the two skills tested here, the analysis of writer's use of language and how to compare the effects of that usage in different texts. So the examiner is telling you to uh, get on to your teachers uh, or tutors or whatever you have and actually ask them to go through this in a lot more detail because that's where they're missing marks. Marks, perhaps I'll do a, a couple of uh, tutorial videos on it or a tutorial video on it. Um, I've done model answers for this which I'm going to go through within the next day hopefully. So after that I'll, I'll see how I feel about how well it's explained because I think with the reference to the video earlier we know now very much I hope what not to do and then maybe if we see a lot of examples of, of what we should do then maybe we can um Maybe that will be ironed out enough. But uh, if you are confused on this section, please do look at the other videos and obviously ask your teachers and tutors and the people who've been in charge of your education for years to, to, uh, to you know, just just make that bit a little clearer to you. So.
Looking at the next comment they had, the question was, this question was the most desirable, demanding of the questions in section A, despite it being built to some extent on the candidate's acquired knowledge and familiarity of the sources from previous three questions. So what they're saying there is that this shouldn't be that hard because the candidate has had to read the other two pieces, so they should have some ideas in mind already about what they could compare and what they could talk about. Some candidates achieved high marks for their response to this question, but many did not. If there was evidence of direct comparisons, far too often it focused on content or purpose and audience, not the language. So remember, your focus is language, and then afterwards you can compare through different things if that's your point of comparison, but it has to focus first and foremost on language. Furthermore, there was an obvious weakness in the candidate's ability to select the most appropriate quotations. Despite all, the, despite all three source texts, especially the nominal Claire uh, Francis text being full of interesting, lively, and vivid passages, candidates often chose peripheral examples such as pronouns or other single words. So, what we're looking for in question four, it seems, is phrases. We're looking at picking out phrases. So, do I have that here? No, I must put in evidence. And I'm going to just put here use phrases and we'll come to the rest of those in a second um, candidates often defaulted to quite empty comments about formality and informality either without well selected examples or with examples which were not in fact supportive wow oh. so basically the candidates there were actually picking things out and then just throwing in examples or, or evidence that didn't actually support it at all those who did focus on language sometimes just listed linguistic techniques or devices without giving the counsel effects and not comparing. So remember all the different parts that you have to pick out. You compare things in your essay. Remember this one's going to be like a little essay. You kind of pick things out, make your introduction, and then you know pick something that's similar or different. Uh, run with the comparison A B A B A B, and then always 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 discuss the effects um, the effects that it's actually having on the reader. Um, great. So, fewer than 40% of the candidates achieved a mark out of 10 or so. Wow, fewer than 40% of candidates achieved a mark of 10 out of the 16. Fewer than 40% achieved a mark of 10. So that means 60% of people got a C or below, and this is for a higher paper. So when you think about that, that wouldn't be enough for an A star, an A or a B. So on this question, this question really let everyone down. So I th anyway, so I guess that's just uh, statistically affirming what we already know, that this is well, the hardest question, or this is the question that people find most difficult, should I say, and uh, they're not, not prepared for it. Uh, this is just the too many candidates did not know how to address this question. No, right, sorry, we should have just read what he was going to say rather than say it. Um, so the examiner tips then, uh, must support with evidence, uh, use phrases, analyze phrases rather than just single words. Um, the similarity difference can be in what is picked up, uh, picked out, or in how it is used or who it is aimed at, but must focus on language first and foremost. Good, and you must remember to compare whatever else you do. So that's, I think that's really, really sound advice. And uh, he, perhaps if we if we can uh, get a load of mock questions up, or ask your teacher for a load of mock questions, then that's really going to help us kind of develop the uh, the response that uh, we can we can go with here. Or perhaps someone's already done a couple and they want to volunteer some. Um, if that's the case, that would save me a lot of typing. So please, if you've you've done something with your teacher. And uh, you know you got a good mark for it uh, for this question, and you want to put it up. I'd be more than happy to throw it up here as long as you didn't mind. And remember, you'd be uh, helping loads of people with their learning.